Hello dear friends, so after a long time I am uploading this video which was pending from a long So let's start without wasting much of the time I want to show that my set of all units of Z root 2 is an infinite set In the previous one of my videos, I will keep the link in the description box You can see that we have discussed about this That is Z square root of minus 5 and I was thinking about units of it Then I went for the properties of the norm, we proved that and after that this video should come Okay. So, what you are going to prove in this is, we will first prove that the set of all units of z root 2 is an infinite set and then th we will think about how many units does z square root of minus 5 has. For both of them, we will require the properties of a norm, these three properties which we have proved already. The properties were n of x equal to 0 if and only if x equal to 0, n of xy is equal to n of x into n of y, n of x equal to 1 if and only if x is a unit of z root d where norm is defined by norm of a plus root db is equal to mod of a square minus db square right? okay. so what I can see over here if I just find out one of the unit and I take a power of them that power is again a unit why? let me just give you a brief idea what I am going to do suppose if I prove my alpha is a one of the number inside z root 2 which is unit if it is a unit by this third property I know that my n of alpha must be same as 1 okay. now if I consider n of alpha square we know norm is what it can distribute over multiplication so I know it is n of alpha types n of alpha I know my n of alpha is 1 dot 1 that is nothing but 1 so I know my alpha square therefore my alpha square is also unit in generalizing this I will get my alpha raised to n is also unit of z root 2 for any n inside natural number right? so if I know if I find one of the unit inside this then every power of it becomes a unit of my z root 2 correct okay but one thing is there suppose if I consider such a number such that after some times after taking some powers it becoming the same thing like the we have right if I have alpha is a order n element then alpha raised to n will become again 1 and then alpha raised to n plus 1 will become alpha and then the cycle will go on right so we need to think about such an element inside z root 2 such that after taking any power of it we are not coming back to alpha or 1 Okay, that is a simple thing. For an example, we know that 1 is a unit of it. Right? Since I know that my norm of 1 is 1 or otherwise also I know the multiplicative inverse is 1. Also minus 1 is also unit of it. But I cannot consider this 1 and minus 1 as my alpha. Because if I consider this as my alpha, my alpha square is 1. Correct? If I consider this as my alpha, then my alpha square is 1 and alpha cube is again minus 1. So there is cyclicness in this alpha power, right? So I just want to find out such an alpha, such a unit element inside z root 2 such that there is no cyclicity. Okay. So there is a simple one. We know that I will just consider one of the element. Uh, I will just consider one element. I will just write with the black color. Consider alpha is equal to 3 plus root 2 times 2. Okay. Now I consider norm of this, my norm of alpha. By the definition of norm, I know it is what? So it is something about mod of 3 square minus, this is my d, that is 2, times, this is nothing but 2 square, that is 4, right? So it is 9 minus 8, that is nothing but 1, correct? So implies me, my alpha, this new element which I choose, my alpha is a unit, is an unit element, is an unit element of z root 2 correct okay so now i need to think about after taking any power of it can it ever become one just think about it after taking any power of it right suppose if i consider alpha square what will it become so it is 3 plus root 2 times 2 3 plus root 2 times 2 this will become what this will become this times this is the thing but 3 threes are 9 plus this time this right so it is 2 times 4 that is nothing but 8 plus root 2 inside the bracket uh, this 2 is this 6 
and this is 6 right so this is coming out to be 17 plus 12 root 2 and if you take third power fourth power any power you will take this is never going to become 1 correct therefore therefore alpha raised to n is unique why i concluded any power cannot become one but since over here you can see that if i consider third power this number and this number both will increase you know? and we have to just add them okay so alpha raised to n is unit of z root 2 for any n inside set of all natural numbers correct so for every natural number i know that this alpha raised to n is a unit that means how many units this has it has infinitely many units like this it might be possible you find out some other element over here and consider their power they are also units of it correct already without knowing other units we consider one unit and just took the power of it and we found all the powers are unit hence i can conclude that the set of all units of z root 2 is an infinite set this idea works, the similar idea works in every situation when your D is positive. But when your D is negative, there are different different ideas that works in a different situation. We'll think about Z root of minus 5 which I was thinking in my uh, previous videos. Uh, in that videos, in the question I wrote, we need to show that is this set an infinite set? So we'll just check it now, right? Okay. okay. So I know that alpha is a unit, is an unit of z root minus 5 if and only if my norm of alpha is 1 okay. so I'll just consider my alpha is nothing but a plus square root of minus 5 b okay I'll just use this space over here so what is my norm of alpha my norm of alpha is nothing but mod of a square minus on the place of 5 I have minus 5 so it is minus 5 plus b square right into b square right okay so it is nothing but a square plus 5b square and answer is coming out to be 1 so mod value is 1 when does the mod of an integer comes out to be 1 it is only possible when I consider them to be 1 or minus 1 okay, okay. so it is plus 1 or it is minus 1 a square minus 5b square could be minus 1 so therefore from this or let us just discuss this case because we are going to conclude that is not possible since my a square is positive my b square is a positive plus 5 we are doing so it is also positive hence my a square plus 5 b square cannot be equal to minus 1 okay. so we know that only one of the possibilities is there therefore only case is only case is my a square plus 5 b square to be equal to 1 okay now suppose if i consider any positive number on the place of b suppose if i consider 1 then what will become it will become 5 if i consider 2 then uh, if i consider we 2 so it is 2 square 4 4 5 are 20 okay. if you see if i consider any positive number over here my answer will be more than 1 correct so since i took 1 then it became 5 if i took 2 it become 20 if i keep on increasing some positive number or any integer if i consider minus 1 minus 2 anything it will become something which is greater than 1 this entire number will become something which is greater than 1 right okay so i found that if i consider anything which is non zero this can never be equal to 1 right so only possibility for b in this situation is my b must be equal to 0 and hence my a square must be equal to 1 therefore my a should be equal to plus or minus 1 therefore what are the situation left for my alpha alpha can be plus 1 or my alpha can be minus 1 so with this what we have just proved we started with any arbitrary units of this z square root of minus 5 and we found that the only possible units are nothing but plus 1 and minus 1 so we found that my z square root of minus 5 has finitely many elements finitely many units correct okay so I am just concluding again the same thing whenever there is a negative some different situations different number might go with the different uh, criteria and different cases might be there but when the positive case is there almost the same idea works everywhere okay so thank you so much guys for watching this video okay chalo bye bye